I see the light everywhere I go. I see the light that'll lead me home. Thinking and talking yourself into greatness is extremely simple. All you have to do is realize that you're worthy of it. That's it. Literally thinking it and claiming it is enough. But sometimes our mind may tell us, maybe you're not. So the way I've overcome that is every night for five minutes, laying in the bed or sitting down with all the lights off and just repeating, I have infinite potential. I have infinite power at my disposal. Thoughts are real forces. Thoughts are real forces. And the purpose of that is me saying that over and over and over again, like nobody has a bad day. You have a bad moment in a day. What's important to me is when I have thoughts that are bearing off the tracks, I remember that thoughts are real forces. Emotions that I emotionalize, magnetize, and attract similar thoughts. So it's very easy for me to get out of a terrible mindset because when you realize what you think about can become. So I'm thinking about the best of health in all ways that's mentally, religiously, financially, relationship, and I'm thinking of organization. That's how I think myself into wealth. What's, What's going on, dude? I appreciate you coming, man. Brother, this is incredible. Got the lights and shit all popping. Sure, for you. <laughs> for you, of course. I mean, look at, you know. Hey, brother. How yeah. you been? Fantastic, man. Just at a good point. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. 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 Finally. Uh, what season of life are you in right now? Harvest. Mm. Harvest. Okay. Working 18 years. I like, no, 20 years. 20 years at the craft and, um, you know, just really starting to, like, maybe about six months ago, it just really started to take a turn, like, for, like, where I, like, finally saw, like, light at the end of the tunnel. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, me starting my business in 2000. One two thousand two, mm -hmm. like there are several different things that I had to learn. Coming from a family rich in love, not necessarily finance. You know, when I got my first one hundred fifty thousand, first two hundred fifty thousand dollar check, mm -hmm. I was like, "Wow, this is fantastic!" Mm -hmm. But that one fifty or two fifty, all that's not yours. Yeah, the U.S. has to get theirs too. Yes, and if you don't, there are going to be three letters that come and see you in the mail. Yeah, so. They came to see me and I'd take care of that. But that wasn't the only thing, just understanding the importance of like investing back into your business yeah. and making sure that whenever you travel, travel with an agenda that's going to either relax you or educate or further your business. Like these are like things I had to learn on the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the, the, I, I, the, the, the way I look at things is my father used to always say there are two things that people can teach you, what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. As your friend and knowing you, as your brother, I've known nothing but success, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who you've designed for, yeah. your own label, your taste level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, you partnered with McDonald's and you outfitted 900,000 employees, 15,000 right. locate. Success right. at a high level. Right, right, right. What came, and you did mention a bit before, but if you could dive in more, what couldn't you see before you got there? Wow, that's a great question. Rather stumped. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess what I couldn't see is like, you know, sometimes, so there is this, the, the, this, this program that I am really delving into and it's called the power of the mind. Mm. And it talks about wherever you are in your life, you are there because of how you think. Mm. And I was like, man, that is so accurate. Yeah. You, you reach a certain point as a professional 
that like like you don't need any like street props. You need right. like the green props. Right. Right. Because we right. have children. We have yeah. wives. We want to buy homes. We want to educate these children properly. And we just want to just you, you want to reap the rewards. Mm -hmm. What I didn't see when I first started was that. Mm. Like I didn't I, I was just I, I, I did it because this was something that was a necessity to me because it was a necessity to me. It made it easy for me to do it. Yeah. And like, you know, my, my, my mother always says, you know, find something that you love to do that you can get paid at. Because if you love to do it, the money is going to come. Yeah. And like, you know, like I, it's, it's kind of like one of those things I would always hear my whenever I would step out of the obedience line. My mother would always say before she gave me a spanking, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. Yes. And I never understood that until I had a child. Same. And I'm just like, like, I always tell my children, I'm like, like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I don't want to be like, like, I don't want to give you this spanking. Like, do you not understand that? Like, you have the ability to never get a spanking in life. <laughs> do you do you understand how great that is? I've never heard a father say that about a child, <laughs> but, but it is true. <laughs> but I mean, like, like, I, I, I in answer to your question, that's the one thing that I did not account for. Yeah. Yeah. Also, what comes with success, we, we hear this. I don't I haven't heard enough of it delved into. Mm -hmm. There is a cost mm -hmm. to succeeding Absolutely. and achieve, achieving on the level. Usually it's invisible. Mm -hmm. What is that cost that has been invisible that I wouldn't know unless I was in your shoes? The cost is the just, uh, the anxiety. Mm -hmm. Because like, you know, you can put your like nothing great is accomplished by one person It's done by committee. Yeah. Like, you know, there are, you know, single parent households, but like when a household has the appointed parents, it makes things easier. Yeah. So like there, 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 there are so many people that I trusted in my past that like didn't necessarily deserve the trust. Yeah. And when you put full trust in somebody, it can go. It could be a pro or a con. And mm -hmm. I've had a couple of con situations that really put me in a very detrimental situation to where like my health was affected. Yeah. Because like when things fall apart, people are still looking to you because your name is on the mask head. Your name yeah. is on the poster as the director. Yeah. So, you know, those people who were mischievous and however they were mischievous, they get to kind of slither away. And I yeah. say that I say that appropriately. They get yeah. to slither away, but you have to stay and you have to like you have to you have to be sandbags, but flood water is coming yeah. and flood water goes right through sandbags. Yeah. So it, it, it was it, that that was the one thing. Part of culture. Well, a lot of culture right now. We are great at here are my highlight wheel reels. Mm -hmm. Here's my success. Right. Here's what I do really well. What I wanted to hone in. Uh, are the things that we don't do really well. Mm -hmm. I think I watched the MLK doc documentary. I had read every book, I had watched every documentary, mm -hmm. but the one that I watched where it showed his struggles, mm -hmm. he, he became human to me, right? Right. What is your greatest failure to date and why? I would say my greatest failure to date that I'm happy that I'm out of the way of was getting out of my way. Mm. I, 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 like earlier in our interview or earlier in our conversation, I talked about, you know, that power of the mind. Like through this exercise, like I realized that like thoughts are real forces, things that you emotionalize, magnetize and attract similar, like similar and like thoughts. Yeah. It's just, it is a very interesting set, like set of circumstances to like, you know, step out on faith. And like, you know, faith takes time sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So like, you know, like there, there, there would be times where like I would create something and it would sit in my studio or in my house. And like when you first create it, you're like, man, this is Jordan over Elo, man. <laughs> but after a while, you're just like, eh, you know, like. It, like it's it, like I didn't sell out of all of it. So like, is it really that right where if you would have gone to the right places, put it in the right hands, been a bit more visible, mm -hmm. like you could have gotten that 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 same level of success. So it like it, it just took time for me to like get out of my way to just be like, you know what? No, I need you to do this for me. I would just I like I like I would like have access to everyone. But I didn't want to ask anybody anything because sometimes like I feel like 
we sometimes are like really like like we get comfortable too quick. Yeah. But I got other friends, whether they be from other tribes, Star David, Anglo, African American, like, yo, they be like, yo, I need you to do this. Yeah. I need you to at me. Yeah. I'll be like, nah, just let him do it. Yeah. And I had to start getting on that. Yeah. Bro. Intentional. At, bro, at me. Yeah. Because like if you don't, like if you don't pretty much let these people know, like, this is what I want you to do. Sometimes they'll just be like, nah. Yeah. But the person who is the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Yeah. And I had to learn that. So yeah. I, had to, I just had to learn to get out of my way. Yeah. When you look at personal weakness, mm-hmm. uh, one of mine is perspective. Mm. Uh, there had been some failures in the past where it was tough for me to trust my perspective. If I could do wow. that. Wow, 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 yeah. I, I had to do the personal work to shift my perspective, mm-hmm. especially if I want to have the perspective from a faith standpoint. Mm-hmm. What is some of your personal weakness or one of your personal weaknesses that you know if you don't account for, it has the ability to jeopardize everything? I've heard one. I mean, you know, damn, bro, you're trying to get all the like, bro, like, <laughs> Superman's weakness is kryptonite. He wasn't walking around touting it. <laughs> now, you know, it's interesting you say that, though, right. because I feel like culture, and you, you're an athlete, I was mm-hmm. an athlete, mental toughness. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. How much can you focus with pretending like you don't, you're not weak mm. until oh, that wow. time catches up with you? Because it's going to catch you. It's going to catch you. It's going to catch you. Right. So I actually think from a life strategy standpoint, if I account for my, if I know the weakness, mm-hmm. I can then work on it. Right. Now, I know this yeah. is different. Now you, you, you're talking about it, but I think yeah. there's power in that. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and that's just your question. Like, just the main thing is just like belief mm. and faith. Yes. And what's so interesting about that exercise is that the subconscious believes what you tell it. And one of the things that I've learned is that like, you know, I repeat to myself for five minutes a day, I have massive power at my disposal. I tell myself that, right? Mm-hmm. But there was a time when I wasn't telling myself that. So when I would make something or do something extraordinary, like, like I knew it was extraordinary, but like specifically in this, in, in this time we're in right now, mm-hmm. this very moment of like, you could do something extraordinary and it has a 24 hour shelf life, which is like, wow. Mm-hmm. Like you realize how hard I worked to get <laughs> next to Obama? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and this, is, this picture's only good for 24 hours? Yeah. I think there was the first black president. Yeah. I mean, like, it, 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 I, like I, I use that as the tip of the iceberg, but it's just like faith, faith, because I'll say this very quickly. Take your time. If you are living like, like, like real world, real time, you got bills, you got all these things that are like real, like tangibly real, mm-hmm. that you see, mm-hmm. but faith is telling you, believe, I got you. Mm-hmm. This headache you got, all this anxiety you're feeling, it's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, nah, but like, I see this in real time. But the spirit is telling you, listen to me. Mm-hmm. Have I not shown you? Mm-hmm. Like every single time you've had a situation, have you not pulled through? Have I not mm-hmm. shown you? And like sometimes like the mind will just trick you until you, and, until you finally fall in line and like sync up. And when you sync up, you're like, I actually will be all right. Yes. And then once you do that, it frees up your mind. You got more mental bandwidth. And when you got mental, more mental bandwidth, then all the blessings that I've been promising you fall right into your lap. Yes. And he's saying, if you would have believed this 10 years ago, you'd be on. That is what I think culture is figuring out in regards to defining success. It used to be fake the mental toughness, hmm. turn off everything you thought just to get there. Mm-hmm. Now it's, oh, the goal is the same, but how you carry it is yeah, a part of bro. your success. Yeah. Because if you don't carry it, when you get there, you have the ability to lose it. Oh, absolutely. Or to not stand up to it. I'm gonna tell you something. So my children in the summertime go to this program called Teach to Reach. 
and it's you know it's in our community african-american woman she's an educator she runs it and whenever i uh whenever i sell anything you know i divide my money up into like tithes i divide money up into like what's going back to the business what goes to vendors and then i have just a special pot mm -hmm. but like since i hadn't been going to church in person because of COVID, like i would split it. i would send half of that to the church mm -hmm. and then i would go and and my wife and i we would support somebody in the community and we rolled up on her and you and i both know they're not handing checks out to people with you know sepia tone oh, it's, it's difficult yeah. right we rolled up on her and just gave her this gift and like it like it, it wasn't like you know 50 grand but it was a nice amount and like she literally cried but I had to stop her in that moment. I said, you know, the reason why I do that is because mm -hmm. like when I was younger, my father was just like, he never cried ever until we got older. Mm -hmm. And when he was about to transition, like he was like, but like, I want my children to see that vulnerability. Yeah. But also understand like, you gotta be a man too. Yeah. But like when it's something good and it's something worthy of praise. Do it. Turn the water on bro. Yeah. Let it rain. I think as black men, we're supposed to. There, were, there was a reason our fathers, they gave us what they could give. We, mm. we definitely have to take that. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to. If you couldn't cry, I'll cry for you. Right. 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 So I, I definitely, I definitely, I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. Foundation. Mm -hmm. you, you said faith a lot. 18 years, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Longevity. Yeah. Successful longevity. Right. Can I get a lens into your foundation and what that looks like? Where you pull from? It's noisy right now. Where are you pulling from? How do you know truth from what the world is, is saying? Um, pulling from the main thing that I'm pulling from is knowing that each day is not promised, mm. how quickly things can change. Um, just really, well, naturally, I'm pulling from a faith that is overflowing, omnipresent, abundant, mm -hmm. merciful, but also like in the earth realm, wife, children, mother, sister, uncle. Yeah. Like, you know, the thing that I learned when, uh, when, when, when my wife and I like, <laughs> oh man. When we had our first son, naturally there's no instruction manual, right? We, like, I'm driving home from Cedars and I'm driving like two miles an hour. <laughs> I did the same And my thing. wife is like, will you please drive this car home? <laughs> like, she said some other things too, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But once we got there, it was like, okay, we got, I guess we're gonna raise this kid now. Like, it's just like, it, it's like, are you, are you gonna give him a bath or am I? It, it, it yes. was just like, and it, it's, it was so interesting because one thing I realized from having a child is how resourceful you have to become, right? And the one thing I say about both of my sons is that like Jay, Jay Z has this, this line says, I'm like a dog, I never speak, but I understand. And my children, like they will look me in the eye and their, 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 their stare is so piercing and what I read from them is, I didn't ask to come here. You bought me here. So now that I'm here, it's your responsibility mm. to make sure I'm right. Looking like that. Mm -hmm. Now go do it. Mm -hmm. Soon I'll be able to talk and intellectualize with you, but until I can, go be resourceful. Yes. And I was like, man, that's a bar. Yes. This is from a child who, can't, he didn't, who didn't say a word, yeah. but I'm just gathering this because I'm just synced up with them. So that's like that that that's like my, my foundation is like literally like looking at my children, mm -hmm. understanding like I had a great upbringing in Altadena and Pasadena. I always talk about the city. Yeah. I love it because of just what it meant in terms of how we were raised around multi ethnic, multicultural. We had respect for everyone, but we had knowledge of ourselves yep. in our community. Yep. So that made us incredible citizens because I can talk to anybody from a Klansman to a gangbanger. It don't matter. Yep. But I got that because of the environment that I was raised in in Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. 
have you had the opportunity to sit uh, or understand why Boz was created? Have you had the opportunity to sit uh, or do you already understand why you were created? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming into that understanding of, of why, I'm, why, I'm, why I was created mm -hmm. like now. My, um, I have a, my mother and father married. They had my sister first, Kasmin Janae, and then they had two sets of twins that were stillborn. And then wow. they had me. So it was supposed to be six of us, but it's only two of us. Mm. Between both of my parents, I am more like my mother, where like my mother never met a stranger. My sister's more like my father, where she's like, I'm not really for the play play until I get to know you. Okay. Like, I'm not just coming in here lighting the room up. But once I realize everything is cool, I'm then mad. we're good. So in terms of like why I was created, you know, to um, my, my, my like people who are like people who I know, like there's a hug and embrace that I give people that's like, I haven't had a hug like that forever. And I, I use that as one example of like, there is a value in, like my father always said, people will never forget how you make them feel. Yes. And I guess, you know, me doing what I do in terms of fashion design, you know, me, um, I know that vanity is one of the sins, but like, you know, me being able to dress someone in a particular way and for them to like get around, you know, their peers and feel magnificent that like that's a skill yeah that is that it, it's it's something something i mean i guess it can't be taught but you know like it's something that i have naturally mm -hmm. so i would say that that's my answer making people feel making people feel good i can attest to that yeah i can attest to that. Amen. as we continue to go on i think we i as i continue to grow i've had to recalibrate success measures mm -hmm. is that something you've done as in, in every stage of life how, do, how does that weigh on you? You know, like I live my life in these parables of like, like since rap music is ha like, has been so close to, to my life. Like, you know, <laughs> like I remember I was taking a, uh, I, I was taking this test and um, I was, <laughs> this is so ridiculous, but I, I was taking this, I, I was writing this, uh, th this note to my wife from this test that we were taking. And I was like, um, Hawaii, and I remember how Mace spelled Hawaii, mm -hmm. and that's how I like. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like, like, but I mean, I, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that to you to say that. Um, so the reason why I, the, re, the reason why I gave you that example is because Jay has a lyric where he says, "I started in the game wanting more money than Puff. Now I realize Puff money ain't enough." Mm. Like, I started, and I was thinking. I just want enough money to just make sure that I'm good, that I don't have to go and work for anyone. Mm -hmm. Then I met my wife, we had children, and then you, the, the things that you have to account for change because you can rent if you want, mm -hmm. but ultimately you want to be an owner. Yeah, cool. So, I, so I, I, like, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but like living in Los Angeles, my wife and I, we would look at each other because we're both earners and we would look around like where's our money going like where's our money at mm -hmm. and we wanted to own but like the cost to purchase a home los <laughs> angeles is a renter's metropolis mm -hmm. not necessarily a homeowner's metropolis right? right so it didn't really like like i didn't fully understand the the demonic force of redlining mm. until I had a family and it was time for us to like put our children in school and like I worked at United Talent Agency yeah and we were all fresh out of college so I have friends who are you know Star David Anglo Asian mm -hmm. all their parents got bread to just like get like oh yeah my father had this house he did it to me Oh, I just got this house on Mahullin. My father gave me five hundred thousand dollars, and I'm thinking, I don't have anywhere close to that. Right. My father and mother, although again, rich in love, mm -hmm. but not fine. I'm like, well, like, how is this passing me up? And then, like, when when, when I did my research and understood, like, you were redlined as people 
for 30, 40 plus years. That's how you do it. And the people who weren't redlined, they had a 30, 40 year head start. Correct. Right? Correct. So you educate your kids at USC, you buying property in Hancock Park, yep. whereas we're living on Central yeah. in an apartment. Got a Cadillac, but don't own nothing. Right. So it was very difficult for me to just wrap my head around just that just 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 that situation and it was very hard to just really understand okay i'm literally starting from zero i have to grind from the bottom to make it to the bottom yeah it's a crazy concept yeah <laughs> yeah they're gonna be up and comers that look just like me and you mm -hmm. they're gonna have a whole bunch of noise in their yeah. ear yeah that are gonna want what you have mm -hmm. they may or may not want what comes with it. What is the legacy Boz is leaving? Hmm. I always tell my sons, um, I build these businesses for you to be able to do what you want to do. Right? Mm -hmm. Like currently in my life, like I'm finally, finally getting to a point where I'm like, if I don't want to deal with that person, I don't have to. That's a luxury. Yeah. Because there are people who professionally have to deal with professional non smilers yes. and professional ASS. Yes. There are people who have to do that. Yeah. So, my legacy to them is you can do whatever you want. If you want to be a culinary master, yeah. you can do that. If you want to just make ceramics, you can do that. Like, whatever you want to do on a Tuesday at 11 45, you can do you that. You can do that. And it's, it's, it's just so like, like, I remember when I was in college, I had this, this, this job where I was like doing, I was a runner and I was doing all this stuff. And I will remember going to Malibu and Pacific Palisades and I would just see people out at like 9.58 and they just like, no. <laughs> they like this. And I'm like, and I'm rushing to get to work. I'm rushing, taking stuff around. I'm like, what are like, what, what syllabus are their parents reading from to where right. they can relax like that right. right now. So there are pros and cons to every situation because idle hands is a devil workshop, right? So I don't want my kids to have idle hands, but I want them to have the ability for whatever you all want to do. You are one going to have the knowledge of yourself. You're going to have the education. And most importantly, you're going to be financially stable and aware to go and do what you want to do. That's the legacy. Yeah, that's it, my brother. That's hard. I appreciate you, G. Oh, bro. That's it right there. All day. Yes, sir. I'm better.